welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I wanted to talk about how you can use a couple of key concepts to achieve really cinematic, dramatic street photos in your work every day. Now, if you've been following me here on this channel or on social media, like on Instagram, you will notice that most of what I share are images that use shapes and silhouettes and typically really dramatic lighting to achieve a certain emotional or visual effect. So in this video, I wanted to talk to you about how I use lighting, color, and a couple of other things to achieve that cinematic, dramatic effect in my photos. Now, before we jump in, if you could like the video, if you do like it, uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I'll ask you again at the end, but you may as well just do it now and uh, if you're planning on sticking around. So with that, Thank you so much for watching and let's jump right in. Okay, so I wanted to start and talk a little bit about why creating dimension or drama using things like backlighting, dramatic lighting, color contrast, etc., is important in street photography and, and really in any photography. Now, the reason is that basically there's a difference between our eyes and the sensor of a camera or a strip of film right our eyes can see and inherently understand three dimensions however a camera or a roll of film is taking three dimensions and interpreting that onto a flat two-dimensional plane so our job as photographers is to create as much depth and contrast in an image as possible to render that image in a way that feels three-dimensional to the human eye. The eye wants to see things in three dimension. It's what it's designed to do. So the more we can do to make the image feel three-dimensional, the more impact it will have to the viewer. Now, in film and fashion, you can modify light, you can place light in certain places, you can ask your subject, whether that's an actor or a model, or even in product photography, you can move the subject of what you're filming or photographing around, modify the light, and use direction to create that sense of depth and contrast and separation between the subject and the background. In street photography, we do not have that luxury. We don't get to design the scene in the same way that you would on a set somewhere. Some of the best and most prolific photographers use light and separation for deliberate effect. In, in my opinion, the ability to deliberately use separation to create contrast, depth, and render an image in a way that simulates a three-dimensional feel or allows the eye to interpret a photograph in three dimensions and to understand the relationship of a subject in space is the thing that separates great photographers from everybody else. So what makes a cinematic, dramatic image? To me, it's about achieving visual separation between your subject and the background via contrast and via light. Now, this is different than background blur or bokeh, which can be achieved using the aperture of your lens. Now, there's nothing wrong with using aperture to create background blur or bokeh using your lens. It's actually a very effective technique, specifically in something like product photography or portrait photography. But what I'm here to talk to you about today is street photography. And these are just my opinions. There's no right or wrong way to make street photos. This is what I find the most interesting and compelling to use as a technique to make my own work. And also when I view other people's work, the work that I tend to find most compelling is typically using similar techniques as the ones that I'm gonna to talk to you about today. So if you are somebody who really likes to shoot with a wide open aperture and achieve a ton of bokeh and background blur in that way, go for it. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that and I love you for it. This is just my opinion on how I make my work. All right, so that's enough waxing philosophically about aperture versus separation and how to achieve effects in camera. Let's get into the meat of the point of this video. So the first thing is to think about the direction of the light and use the direction of the light to your advantage. I often use backlighting or strong side lighting in my images. Now in portrait photography or even product photography or you know really anything where you are on a set where you can control light, typically there is a light placed behind or to the side of the subject. And this rim light allows the the illumination of the back of the subject's you know head or hair or something and it creates almost a, a very small halo which allows for separation between whatever the backdrop is and the subject we can use that same concept 
in street photography to create separation between the subject that we're photographing and the background that is surrounding them. So I'm often using the sun as that natural source of backlight. And this is not for everybody. And certainly you need to make sure that you're not actually staring directly into the sun. So use your viewfinder, make sure you wear sunglasses, whatever the case is going to be, protect your eyes. Um, but the sun can be a really powerful tool to create really beautiful, dramatic, cinematic images in your street photography. Now the sun can be used as a backlight, but it also can be used to the side. Using light to the side of your subject can create senses of profiles. You can get a little bit more sense of detail sometimes in their faces. So think about using the light as it gets lower in the sky to potentially use things to illuminate subjects from the side to create that sense of separation. A third way of achieving separation in your image is using color contrast. So you can do this in a couple of different ways. If you're thinking monochromatically, it can be what is the difference between a really light area of the photograph and a really dark area of the photograph? Or if you're using actual colors um, or something non-monochromatically, can you be thinking about things that are on opposite sides of the color wheel? So they're complementary and they're going to be standing out from each other. So if you've got a really cool scene, is there something in a really bright, warm color, like a red coat or something like that, that is standing out as compared to the background of the scene? Now, I don't use this last tip nearly as often, but there are some photographers who use this to really great effect. I'm typically looking for backlights or side lights to create that sense of separation, but if you can be using color theory or even monochromatic differences between highlights and shadows without a strong light source um, in the frame itself, you can also achieve great separation using that sense of color contrast. So if you look at the color wheel and you're photographing something that's really warm and you've got a really cool color color that's going to stand out or vice versa where you've got a cool scene and a really warm color is going to pop against the background. That is another great way of achieving some sense of separation between your subject and the background of the image. So how can you get started using some of these tips? Well, the first thing I would say is practice in black and white. Black and white is a way to really strip a photo of the ability of color to become a crutch for interest and instead have to focus on composition and achieving that separation in different ways that you may be achieving it. So it's always going to be about the sense of contrast when you're photographing in black and white because you have no colors to define that separation for you. I do a lot of my street photography in black and white, although not all of it. And if you practice in black and white, your eye will become trained to see that difference in the brights and the darks of a frame and allow you to start thinking really deliberately about how you might use light in your own photographs. Once you've gotten comfortable using that sense of contrast, using the black and white practices, introduce color back into your images. Start to think about that color theory. Think about finding places where maybe there's nothing but a cool background or nothing but a dark background and look for a pop of color against that or a sense of contrast or complementary colors. Now, if you're shooting during the day, think about shooting earlier in the morning or later at night when the sun is a little bit lower towards the horizon. If you're doing this, you can use the sun specifically to backlight or side light your subjects a little bit more easily. When the sun is really high up ahead, like you know from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., uh, it's very, very hard often to find that sense of contrast because everything is a little bit bleached out. The sun is at its strongest. The shadows are at their shallowest. So it can be harder to find that sense of contrast in the middle of the day. You can certainly find it. It just requires a little bit more creativity and a little bit more practice. So if you're just getting started and you're trying to figure out how to create more visual interest in your images, think about shooting earlier in the morning, later in the afternoon. That doesn't necessarily mean sunrise or sunset, but it does mean times of the day when the sun is closer to the horizon, a little bit lower in the sky, so you can try and use it as a, as a tool that you can use to sculpt the direction of the light and the shapes of your subjects. And at night, 
you can use artificial light in the same way that you can use sun during the day. So look for bright storefronts, look for headlights, look for steam, one of my favorites. Look for things like that where there's a really strong sense of light that's going to illuminate the scene and then look for silhouettes, subjects, opportunities for side lighting, whatever the case is going to be, using all of those same techniques that you use during the day, but use them at night using artificial light sources. Now, at night, the sense of contrast is going to be stronger. There's going to be more darkness in your image than there is going to be light. So think about that as you're starting to craft the shapes, the silhouettes, the subjects, and the separation of your image. Okay, so I'm trying to keep this video a little bit shorter than the past couple that I've released. So let's wrap this up with a quick summary of the things that we've talked about today. One, look for backlit or strongly side lit scenes. This helps the viewer to separate the subject from the background by creating a stronger sense of contrast between what's happening visually in the foreground and the background of whatever the frame is that you are putting together. Two, think about the direction and the strength of the light. What is that direction? Where is the light coming from and how strong is it? And how can you use that direction and intensity to your advantage to create visual interest? And three, this goes beyond aperture. This isn't about aperture. You can use aperture as the finishing touch, the artistic sort of finesse to the image that you're looking for. But I would encourage you to start with thinking about the relationship of the light itself to the subject, to the background, to create that separation. And the aperture is the thing that you can finish it off with. It's not just about background blur. It's not just about bokeh. In street photography, as I like to make it, aperture is just that, that finishing touch that if you use it nicely, can add an additional level of separation. But don't start with aperture. Finish with aperture. All right, so I hope that this was helpful. If you like this video, please give it a like. Please subscribe to the channel. It really helps the channel grow, and I really appreciate your support. With that, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.